Hello and welcome to the first of our Worship on Wednesday services. It's great to be able to welcome you. And my name is Helen Scammon. If you don't know me already, I'm the Associate Vicar here at St. Thomas's. Our hope is during these services, you would be able to just pause in your week to hear the word of God, to worship and to pray, knowing that others from across Lancaster are joining you in prayer. And then afterwards, if you would like, please do feel free to join us for a Zoom chat with others online. We're going to be looking at a series of talks this autumn based on the idea of the character of God called God is. And the first one that we're looking at today is God is holy. We're going to be looking each week at a different psalm as we reflect on the character of God. And so I'm going to hand over now to Jeanette, who is leading our service today. Hello, my name is Jeanette. It's my pleasure to add my welcome to Helen's for this very first Worship on Wednesday. Today, as Helen said, we're thinking about the holiness of God. And so we're going to begin with a verse which you'll hear later as part of our reading today. It's a verse from Psalm 99, and it's this. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord Almighty is holy. With that in mind, what hymn could we possibly begin with but holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Oh, 
let's confess our sins and look to God for his forgiveness. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Helen is going to bring us our Bible reading and then open God's word to us. Let's have our reading from Psalm 99, beginning at verse 1. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion, he is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty, he loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Let's pray as we start. Lord God, thank you for your word to us and we pray that today you would speak to each one of us as we consider your holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you may find it helpful to have Psalm 99 in front of you, so do open that if you have a Bible with you. The Lord our God is holy. I wonder what you see holiness as. I wonder what you think of if I say God is holy. I think that for lots of us, actually, when we think of holiness, we think of separateness on one hand and of absolute good and purity on the other we could look at the passage today and ask ourselves, what does it mean when we say that God is holy? Well, the idea of separateness, we see that in this psalm, don't we? It says, he is exalted, he is lifted high, he spoke from the pillar of cloud, he is worshipped at his holy mountain. He is a God who doesn't tolerate sin, you punished their misdeeds. But what does that mean when we look at the whole Bible? Is, where is this sense of separateness? And is that still true today? It's very clear that in the Old Testament, there was a sense of God as holy, as separate. The worshipping life of the people of Israel had many examples where God was to be kept something at a distance, or the people were to be kept at a distance from God because God's presence was terrifyingly holy. So much so that separation was needed. And when the temple was built, remember there was a holy of holies into which only the chief priest could go. But how about us as New Testament people? What does God's holiness mean to us? When we say that God is holy, does it also mean that he's separate? Well, let's have a look quickly at some key points in the New Testament. We start, of course, with 
Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, born as a baby who grew up to walk among ordinary people. If you think about it, actually Jesus invited people to come closer. I was reading the story of Zacchaeus the other day, and remember Zacchaeus was up a tree, and Jesus said, come down from your tree. I'm coming to your house today. Jesus had a holiness which drew people to him, but he also drew closer to other people. And then, of course, we have the tearing of the curtain to the Holy of Holies at the point at which Jesus died. The curtain that symbolized the great separation between God and humanity, that was torn down. Why? Because Jesus became the holy, perfect sacrifice that meant we could be forgiven, that our sins are washed away, that we're clean. And it's not that God isn't holy anymore, but actually it's that we join him in his holiness. And that's achieved through Jesus' death on the cross as the perfect holy sacrifice. And in Hebrews 12, we read this. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom and storm. And it goes on, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Holiness is no longer about separation because the Son of God has given himself in sacrifice so that we, though sinful and often failing, are forgiven and we're clothed in righteousness and holiness. Isn't that amazing when we stop and think about it? And actually, in the psalm, we see that God, in the midst of his holiness, is also constantly in relationship with his people. He's not remote and uncaring. He is exalted, but he also cares and is involved in the lives of his people. He is a God who acts with justice, who answers his people when they call, and who forgives their sins. God is a holy God, but he is a God of relationship, and we're brought into relationship with a holy God because the Father loves us and sent his one and only Son to die so that we too could become holy. But does all of that mean that the holiness of God is no longer relevant, no longer means anything? Well, I would say not at all. Holiness doesn't mean that we have to separate ourselves from God as they did in the worshipping life of the Old Testament. But it's still true that God's holiness points to real difference between God and us. And I think it's really important that we remember that and we recognise it. Let's have a look again at Psalm 99. It paints a picture of a God who sits enthroned in heaven, who rules, who judges fairly, and yes, who punishes evil, and who forgives. God is not just like you or I, and it's important that he isn't. He is so different in perfection, in purity, in power, in righteousness, in absolute goodness. He is far beyond what any of us are. His holiness is awesome. And when we realise that, where does it lead us? Well, let's look at the psalm. It leads us to worship. As the psalm describes the amazing holiness and greatness of God, the psalmist comes back again and again to encouraging the people of God to worship, finishing with the words, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Our God is different to us. He is mighty and holy and righteous and without fault. And when we fully realise that, we're led to a place of worship and humility, and sometimes also to a place of repentance. And none of that is bad. We are reminded that we are not the centre of the universe, 
but we sit at the feet of a God who is, and he holds our universe in his hands. And I think there's something really significant about realising that we worship a God who is righteous and pure and holy in this world at this time. Because so often people let us down, don't they? Whether it's politicians or friends or church leaders. I'm sure we can all think of well-known church leaders who have failed us, who've turned out to have feet of clay. One of the things I love about the snow is the way in which when it snows, everything gets covered in a blanket of pure white and everything is beautiful and pure. And then, of course, sadly, when the snow melts, we realise that underneath there is ugliness and mud and not everything looks beautiful anymore. And sometimes with other people, whether they're leaders or friends or politicians, from a distance they can look beautiful and pure and holy, but then sometimes it's as if the snow melts and we realise that underneath they're just like we are and they have faults and failings too. But how good it is to know that God is not like that. He is holy and we're not going to suddenly find out that underneath the beauty and the purity and the glory and the wonder, there is ugliness. Not at all. No, the beauty and the glory and the wonder and the goodness go all the way through. There is no end to God's holiness. And in a world of ugliness and disappointment, isn't that worth holding on to? So at this time, when so much else is taken away, there are two things I would like to encourage us with at the moment. And the first one is an encouragement to worship. I don't know if you, are, uh, if you like the song Love Divine or Love's Excelling. I love that hymn. And in it, it has these amazing words, lost in wonder, love and praise. I wonder if you've ever been caught up in worship when you realise that God is powerful and pure and glorious and so much bigger than we are. And you're caught up in wonder at our amazing God. Don't we need to experience worship that reminds us of how amazing God is at the moment especially? Now, few of us can worship in the way that we were able to at the start of the year. But I would encourage you to find a way of worshipping that you can do in the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Whether that's maybe you have a CD that you can put on and find some favourite hymns or songs, whether it's something on the internet or on the radio, I would encourage you to find some time and space simply to worship our amazing God and to connect again with a sense of his holiness and his awesomeness to worship him in wonder, love and praise. And then secondly, I'd like to encourage you to go on a journey with the Holy Spirit into holiness. I'd, have, I'd like to encourage you to invite God's Holy Spirit to be at work in us day by day, growing holiness, holiness in us at this time, as we spend time in God's presence and we become more like him. One thing I've noticed over the years is that holiness isn't necessarily about big gestures, about grand statements. More often than not, it's visible in the small things of life, in the day-to-day -day choices that we make perhaps when nobody else is looking. Not only when life is good and people around us are kind and loving, but when the chips are down, when we're disappointed, when we're tempted to lash out and become bitter, when we're frustrated, who are we then? And how can we ask the Holy Spirit to enable us more and more to be holy and to have integrity, to refuse to speak ill of others, to be the same behind closed doors as we are in public, to speak to the person who delivers our shopping or to who rings us up to ask if we want double glazing in the same way in which we would speak to Jesus. That is the challenge of holiness, a daily challenge rooted in a vision that in God's power 
we can be something better than we are today or we were yesterday. That we're not trapped simply in isolation and frustration and uselessness, but that God wants to use this time to draw us into holiness, to bring transformation and to change us from one degree of glory to another. Let me finish with a prayer. Lord God, we rejoice in your holiness, in your purity, your glory and your goodness. Help us to worship you in wonder, love and praise and to find that we're changed as we draw close to you day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. now to uh, introduce Jenny Gilder who is in Ordinand training with us at the moment and she's married to Matt Gilder our curate. Jenny's going to lead the prayers for us and she's going to be a regular part of the Worship on Wednesday team. Over to you Jenny. As we come before our holy God this morning I'd love to invite you to join in with the response. 
So when I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to say, hear our prayer. Lord God, you are holy. You are exalted and enthroned on high. You are mighty and righteous and without fault. And yet amazingly, in your holiness, you invite us to draw close to you. Thank you that we can bring before you the needs of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we bring to you this broken world full of injustice and suffering and sadness. We ask that you'd give the world leaders wisdom in all that they do courage to make tough decisions and a desire to work for peace whenever possible. And as we think about our world, we pray in particular for all those who were affected by Storm Alex last week, for those whose lives have been devastated. God, would you reach out to them in their pain and give them the knowledge that you understand their sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for the church, both here at St. T's and across our world. We thank you for the creative ways in which churches are connecting with people through online services and social media. We pray in particular for those people within our church family who make online church a possibility. Lord, would you bless them and give them energy and creativity to continue this amazing work. We also pray for the Blackburn Diocese Homegrown Conference this week. We ask that all those who attend would feel equipped to share your love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for those who are close to home, who are struggling at this time. And in a moment's quiet, I invite you to bring them before God now. God of all comfort, would you bring your healing today? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Would you restore that sense of awe and wonder as we praise and marvel at your holiness? God, we know that we are incapable of living a holy life by ourselves. And so we humbly ask that you would teach us to be holy and show us how you would have us live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we conclude now, let's say together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
It wouldn't be a church service without notices, would it? So, a few things to let you know. The APCM is happening online next Monday, the 19th of October. If you're watching this on DVD because you don't have internet, you can still join in by telephone and you will have received a letter from me with this DVD to tell you how to phone into the meeting. If you're online, you should be able to join it on Zoom, although if you prefer to phone, of course, you can phone in and listen as well. On the same theme, uh, we've got the virtual coffee Zooms continuing next Monday as well in the morning at half past 10. And you should already have had some information about how to join those, but do contact me if you'd like to join us and you don't know how. Similar theme again is that we're now having a, a coffee time after the main Sunday service, uh, which is at 10 o'clock on a Sunday. So about 11, um, there's a Zoom chance to get together and just have after service chat. And that started last Sunday very successfully. So it'll be continuing this coming week. And the link for how to get into that is in the connect email. Again, if you want to telephone into that, then if you contact me, I can give you the numbers that you need to be able to do that. Light explosion is coming up. If you are interested in that, or you have children or grandchildren who would be, then do contact Emma or Sarah on the children's team uh, or the church office, and they'll be able to tell you more about that. And as usual, 
you can sign up for the on-site service, which is at 11.30, and you can phone the church office number if you don't have internet access to book your place on that 11.30 on a Sunday, that service. Well, it's been a pleasure to spend some time with you today, but we have a chance now, it's all Zooms, isn't it? We have a chance now to get together on Zoom and have a little chat after the service. So you should have received the information for how to do that with the information uh, to watch this video. And we look forward to seeing you there. A blessing to finish. Father, draw us together, even though we are apart. Make us one, even though we are scattered, one in your love, one in the fellowship of your Son, and one in our purpose to spread your love in the world. So go with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.